The cross entropy loss is the dominant loss function used in machine learning classification tasks. The cross entropy formula is relatively simple to compute. It's a summation of the true probability multiplied by the log predicted probability over all classes in the distribution. Although the formula can be described quite simply in one line of maths, it seems to come out of thin air and it's not clear why this is a standard classification loss function. In this video, we'll go through the intuition of the cross entropy loss, how it's derived, and why cross entropy has become the staple classification loss. Let's start with the basic classification setup to motivate the approach, and let's forget about cross entropy. Imagine we're given an image of an animal, and we want a network to predict which class the image belongs to from a fixed set of possible animal classes. The overall process is that we have an input image, a complicated nonlinear model parameterized by some weights, and some output class prediction. There are a lot of design choices for the model, and one of the most important ones is the form of the output. We could have something complicated, like a text decoder which generates the text of which animal class the image belongs to. Or we could have a simple approach, where the model outputs a number that directly maps to a given class. However, probabilistic theory argues that the most natural output would be an entire probability distribution. For example, if given this image here, a well-calibrated model could say that yes, there is a 99% chance that this is an image of a dog, but there's still a 0.1% chance that this could be of any other class. Making the outputs distributions introduces the idea of uncertainty, as a good model should recognize which class is most likely, but it could also recognize the certainty we have of our prediction and whether other classes are possible, though unlikely. If we are certain that an image is of a given class, we can still assign a probability of 100% to that class and 0% to all the other classes. But if given an ambiguous image, where the image could be assigned to different classes, then representing our predictions as a probability distribution gives us a solid framework to still convey maximum information. Returning to the model setup, the input to the system is an input image xi, and the output is the probability distribution over the different animal classes, p of y given xi. If we assume that we have the labels of the true underlying distribution, p star of y given xi, we can try to optimize the parameters theta of the system such that the model distribution matches the true distribution as closely as possible. The real question is then, what would be the best loss function to ensure that the predicted distribution is close to the true distribution? If you've watched my previous video on the KL divergence, you'll already know that the KL divergence is a very natural measure of distance between probability distributions. As a quick refresher, this is the KL divergence formula, but check out my previous video for further details on why this formula captures distances between probability distributions so well. Therefore, an intuitive loss function would be to minimize the KL divergence between the model and the true distribution. So if we expand the formula, we have an expression which, if we minimized, will bring our model distribution close to the true underlying one. We can also simplify this expression by basic log rules and turn the division inside the log into a subtraction outside the log. We can then separate the two expressions into distinct summations and finally note that the first term does not depend at all on the parameters of the model and in fact is just the entropy of the label distribution. So if we're minimizing this expression with respect to parameters theta, it's exactly the same as minimizing the second term, which might look a bit familiar as it's the cross entropy formula we saw at the start of the video. So to quickly summarize, in this classification setup, our network is implicitly modeling the output probabilities over all classes. A natural loss function would then be to minimize the KL divergence between the model and the true distribution, but minimizing the cross entropy loss is equivalent to minimizing the KL loss. And since the cross entropy loss has a simpler form, it has become the standard classification loss. Let's quickly tie up some loose ends to handle some practical details. The first detail is that if we're claiming to model a probability distribution, then we have to make sure that our output is a valid distribution, namely that the probability sum up to one and that no probability is negative or greater than one. If there are no modeling constraints, then most output distributions will be invalid. However, by having a softmax unit at the end, the scores are normalized into a probability distribution where all outputs are between 0 and 1, and sum together to 1. This is why the softmax unit is nearly always found at the end of all deep learning classification systems, as they convert logits into probabilities. The second detail is that although the cross entropy loss uses target distributions, most labeled datasets only have a single label for each input and won't give the entire underlying distribution. These labels can still be converted into PMFs by assuming that they represent a hard distribution, where the probability of the true class is 1 and the probabilities of all other classes is 0, then the cross entropy loss will still try to minimize the KL divergence between the label distribution and the predicted output distribution. Just as a note though, when this happens, the cross entropy loss can actually be further reduced to the maximum likelihood loss. 
This marks the end of the video. Hopefully the video was useful and you now have a better intuition of the cross entropy loss and what it's doing. Hopefully the idea of it seems natural as it's effectively a simple loss function which implicitly minimizes the KL divergence between our model distribution and the true distribution. Thank you for watching and remember to subscribe if you wish to stay posted for any similar videos in the future.